It's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond, episode number 451 for August 17th, 2016. And I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. And this week, our guest is Bart Bouchotts, back with the second of two videos uh, that we're trying to create to show you the solution to the JavaScript challenges. How are you doing today, Bart? I am doing just fine. All right. Uh, this, this whole video thing has worked out pretty well. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, that we do a little more chatter for the audio-only audience to uh, to make sure that's still just as valuable as it was before. But if you want to see the video, that'll be up over at podfeed.com when we're done recording. So uh, let's see, what did, where did we leave off last time? Okay, so we did four out of the five we just did and finished. So they, they were easy. We did Well, they weren't easy, but we did them. They were all done. And then we made a start on challenge five, which is like it's worth like, quadruple quintuple many many <laughs> times the credit of the other ones it's a big one so this is the um, complex number problem right right so the essentially it's broken into many sub steps but essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create our own custom data type to represent complex numbers and to imbue that data type we're creating with all the different things we want to be able to do to complex numbers um, so, so far, we have written a simple constructor, which stores our complex number as two two data points, this dot underscore real, and this dot underscore imaginary, representing the real and the imaginary part of the complex number. Um, we also then wrote a, some accessor methods to access real and imaginary. So we call them real and imaginary because we're very unimaginative. <laughs> Um, and then we wrote a function called toString, where we put in a whole bunch of ifs and elses to assemble our output in the prettiest possible way. Um, if it was a, if the only thing given was, if it was like minus one i and no real, minus one imaginary parts and no real parts, don't print out zero, just print blankness followed by minus one i and all this kind of, you know, lots of special cases to 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 make it look like a human would write it because we wouldn't we wouldn't write zero plus zero i or zero plus one i or something we'd write i you know we, we wouldn't you know so it's it's trying to be as human friendly as possible our two string function so which is I, why i wanted to get well. uh, one little uh, piece in here when we were talking about it last time i expressed confusion as to why sometimes there's an if statement that doesn't have an else statement and mm -hmm. Joe Romanski wrote to me with a, another one of her wonderful missives, but a piece of that was explaining why sometimes there's an if without an else. And the example she gave was, if you win the lottery, buy me a car. There doesn't have to be an else. There's an implied right. else that is, else don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I love that because that is going to stay. As soon as I saw these if then statements, that, that uh, analogy came back to me. And I think that's really going to help me understand that, yeah, sometimes if there's nothing else to do, just don't yeah just nothing yeah just yeah <laughs> they can hang there they don't you can, you can leave an if statement hanging yep okay and then the last thing we had done was i had put some test some uh, sample code to test the prototype written so far to make sure it printed out everything beautifully and then we called it a day so that's that was part five was that so now i we're think on to i part ended two. that with are you kidding me there's that many more steps <laughs> i went back and re-listen to me say that <laughs> Yeah, because so far, our complex number, we can put values in and we can see them. But that's not particularly useful. If we wanted to use this complex number type to do some sort of, I don't know, physics-y stuff involving magnetic fields and electric fields and stuff, we'd need more, right? This, this is... This is a good start, but they're still pretty dumb complex numbers. So we need to inject some more intelligence into them. And the first thing we're going to inject into them is we're going to make it easier to put the values in. So instead of having to say var my new number equal or my number equals new complex number and then my number dot real and give it a value and then my number dot complex or dot imaginary and give it a value. That's like three steps just to get a number in that. That seems cumbersome. So the first thing I'm going to write is a function called parse, which is going to expect an input in a very generous number of different ways and just do the right thing. So now, parse, is, parse isn't one of those secret words, right? It's not a secret word, but it's a word you'll see used a lot by computer scientists. It just means okay. interpret. It's not sacred in any way. It is not sacred in any way. Okay. Um, it doesn't basically, already have information about it. 
yeah, to parse something means to understand it. So we're writing a function whose like two strings job is to take what's inside and push it out. And parse is very much the opposite. It's like take any sort of a sensible way of describing an imaginary number and suck it in. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so it probably comes as no surprise. It's going to be full of lots of if else statements where we are interested in basically saying, well, if you're this type, then we'll do this with you. If you're that type, we'll do that to you. So I say that your function should be able to accept all the following. So either you can pass parse two numbers as arguments. The first will be the real. The second will be the imaginary. Or you can pass one array which contains two numbers and a real and an imaginary. Or you can pass a string of the form bracket a plus bi close bracket or bracket a minus bi close bracket where a is a positive or negative number and b is a positive number or you can actually give it a complex number and it will interpret a complex it will interpret that for you as well by the so, way i want to remind people in the u.s that when he says bracket he means parentheses if he yeah, means square ones. bracket he says square bracket that is yeah that is one of those annoying cultural differences and the thing is your the, the american way makes way more sense <laughs> well, it, it might not be American. It might be that you're speaking programmer. I don't no, know for sure. No, I, oh, okay. It's it's. I'm speaking like way back to four year old sitting in school. Oh, okay. We never used the word parenthesis. It was like like trunk. It's one of those words like a trunk to us is on an elephant, not a car. Ah. Oh, okay. Oh, so you mean if you were writing a parenthetical expression, you would call them brackets? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you write right back to like baby school. Okay. They were brackets. All right, so I've done my my uh, good deed of the day and cultural differences. Fun to know. Yeah, it is. So yeah, so and it, it actually comes from a word for a thing for holding up a bookshelf. So your one is like way more sensible. <laughs> yeah, because parentheses I, I have... aren't going to hold up a bookshelf at all. It's going to flop <laughs> right over. <laughs> exactly. Books. Anyway, so let's. Okay, so okay, let's so the go last the last book. one I I did interrupt you. The last one was oh go back was a um a an object with a prototype complex number. So we can read a complex number from a complex number. Hmm. Why not? Right? We're, we've gone to all this trouble to define complex numbers. We may as well understand them. Okay. Seems seems like we should do that. So it's going to we're going to be adding to our prototype. So we're going to start with complex. Wait a minute. You've already got stuff typed on screen. What is this is that? everything from last time. So this is this is everything we have. So let's remind ourselves. It's not a bad idea. Good. So hmm. function complex number. This is our constructor method mm -hmm. or constructor function which creates just two little data data points here this dot underscore real is always starting at zero and this dot underscore imaginary always starts at zero because we're very boring then we have our accessor function called real so complex number dot prototype dot real equals function we just sort of like getting real in and out so we say if you didn't give me any arguments just return the value on the inside of the object otherwise we take the value and we store it okay and then we have the same thing for imaginary, very same code, just you know, change the name. And then we have our big long two string that we did last time, which is just building up our pretty little human friendly string, and that's where it stops. Okay. So we know that we have to go complex number. Yeah. What are we? Yeah. So what are we doing again now? We're. I know we we're going to create something called parse, but its its job is to suck the numbers in. Yes. So to parsing means understanding. So we're going to understand, we're going to do our damnedest to understand whatever arguments are thrown at this function. So this function's job is to be as forgiving and as generous as it can. So I sort of thought the first words you'd write would be var uh, parse equals function and then start putting some glop in there. But you started with the words Almost. complex number. Right, because we're adding it to the prototype. So we're basically doing what we've done here and everywhere else. So I'm going to be very lazy. Oh, did you say we're going to add it to the prototype? I, I the, well, I, whether I did or not, the actual text did. So let me, yeah. So add a function named parse to the complex number prototype. Okay. All right. So complex number dot prototype dot parse. Okay. Now equals. Remember, we're going to keep reading more. Uh, okay. Equals function. Equals function. Equals yeah. So we're we're create we're making an anonymous function and we're setting it, we're. We're making complex number of product of parts become equal to this function we're creating here. Ah, okay. So our, our become equals to, which we have Jill to thank for that nice wording as well. Jill's getting really mentioned a lot today. <laughs> okay. So the first thing we say is that if there are two arg two arguments as numbers, so let's let's start by saying, so how do we know how many arguments we have? Um, you can use that dot length thing. On. Well, it's not an, an array though. 
because you raised the second one, right? Well, yes, but arguments, the arguments are are stored in this magic variable called arguments. So we can say if arguments dot length double equals two, triple equals two even. We can, we can be as specific as we like there. So that means that there were definitely two arguments. There could be anything, though. Okay. So now we need to make sure that we haven't been told porky pies. So <laughs> let us... Okay, so if... Let me think about this. Do, do you have to do all this if not a number? If not, not a number kind of stuff? Yeah. So if... Let me think the nicest way. Do I say what we should do if it's if it's an error? Function should allow a number of different ways. The following should all work. I don't actually say what I should do if I get told something I just can't do. So I'm going to throw an exception. So I'm going to say, okay, let's start by storing our, so I'm going to say var new real, e new real equals arguments zero because we're computer scientists and we count from zero. Okay. I'm going to say var new imaginary equals arguments one. Okay, now we've got to make sure these things make sense. So the main so. reason you just create variables there is so that you can start looking at them and deal with them and have it make sense visually. Yeah, I mean, I you could, could have called it arguments bra uh, square bracket zero and arguments square bracket one throughout this, but that'd be annoying. Precisely. And so okay. you could make the argument that there's like a millisecond of space and like a bite or two of RAM been quote unquote wasted. But as far as I'm concerned, making the programmer's life easier is not a waste. It's a sensible <laughs> use of resources. Right. Because you can make it super efficient and have it cause a buffer overflow or something because you made a mistake because you didn't understand what you were doing. Right. Exactly. Okay. So if. Oh. Ah, OK, I'm going to reverse the logic here. So I'm going to say if is not. Is not a number new real or is, is not an, uh, a number new imaginary? Yep. And then what you do is if either of those is true, you're going to say throw new error. Yep. Look at me go. And he's typing in invalid, invalid arguments. arguments. That I'm not being, I'm not in a very verbose mood today. I That's could be good. more verbose. <laughs> it's because he's having to type in front of video. But I'm going to keep reading. Good, good. Okay, okay. so so now we know it's stage, not Porky Pie. It's not Porky Pie, so we can safely save it. So we can say this dot underscore real equals new real comes new real. Properly. Okay. Because, yes, exactly. So this dot on the. Ooh. I'll read okay. this dot underscore say, imaginary. This dot <laughs> underscore. The thing is, the more self-conscious you become about typing, the worse you get at <laughs> typing. And of... also you're being forced to read and type at the same time. And, to yeah, and talk and everything. Yeah, that's right. not normal. Okay, okay, so all good here. So we tested those, and now we've shoved them into this dot underscore real and this dot underscore imaginary. I think I'm following so far, Bart. So I'm going to give a little comment here for my own sanity. Deal with porky pie. <laughs> two numbers. So that's the first of our thing. Oh, so okay. else. Okay. Now, all the other else's deal with a single argument. So well, hang if on, we hang look on. at what's our, our if it. Well, uh, uh, our, back. Our, hang on. If the arguments okay. dot length is uh, equal to two. Uh, then we assign uh, our variables, and then we turn around, shove them into this. Side. Okay, so okay. now we're back to another error. Oh okay, no! Well, then we're not. Another, no. Oh, we're doing more embedded ifs. That's right. We are. So our options are two numbers, an array, a string, an object. So these three here all have one argument. We don't know what that argument will be, but it will be exactly one okay. of them. So the second so, one is going to be an array of two numbers. Let me ask a question. Couldn't you have done this uh, if? Don't type. Stop typing. Uh, couldn't we have done our if is nan on the argument zero and arguments one after we define the if statement for the the uh, array? Because that otherwise we're going to have to repeat this test again. That is a valid way to do it. That I'm is okay a valid if you want to do it, do it twice. I just wanted to see if I was following. Yeah, no, no, that is. So if the arguments is linked to or arguments dot arguments 
zero is an array, and the way we test is something is an array is we go if it argument zero. Array. Nah, that'll be much too easy, Alison. Okay, it's, it's of its of array. array. Okay, so he's edited the first line that did say if arguments dot length uh, is identically equal to two or arguments zero. That's in in square brackets instance of array. So that's a test to see if if it is an instance of an array. Huh. Okay, now we need to be a little more clever here. So either he's adding to his comment as two numbers or an array of two numbers. Why okay, does so. arguments uh, square brackets? Why does does it have a zero there? Ooh, on line one one eight. Yeah. Because I am testing if the first argument is an array. So it's either two arguments, number, number, or one argument that is an array of two numbers. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So, it, right. so if we gotta, gotta do a lot more jiggery pokery here now. Yeah, you do. Uh, so I do. Uh oh, what this. are you changing? No, let me. I'm just thinking out loud for a sec. I know I'm gonna need that. <laughs> You're so if we got them as two separate ones, uh -huh. uh, then we do what we had before. So if we got them as two separate ones, we can copy paste you lot up here. This isn't making very good audio. <laughs> yeah, look, th this is video for a reason, right? Yeah. Okay. You're you're my you're my commentator. I'm 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 typing. Okay, typing. but I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why. Okay, you're so I right. am I am now rearranging my code purely to position myself to actually do something new. So okay. if the arguments are length two, we just do what we did before, which is we take them directly out. Otherwise, we can't take them directly out. Now, I can't well, declare my variables in here, so I need to do more repositioning of code because hmm. I'm changing my we're changing our mind halfway through here. So it means we have a little bit of work to do. I'll okay. finish repositioning my code. My indentation seems to got all messed up. Yeah. Close enough. You probably got a space in there. Somewhere. There you go. So he's typing a lot of stuff, and I don't know okay. why. I will explain it now in a moment. Um, okay, so now we're, our code does what it did before. So we say we're just creating two new variables, new real and new imaginary, and we're giving them a dummy value for now. And we're saying if we got two separate values, new real is the first of the two separate values, and new imaginary is the second of the two separate values. Otherwise, it must be an array. Right, so we've said if it's length two or if the first one's an array. So the else here is for what to do in an array. So how do we get new real from an array? So I'm confused because we're treating the previous one like it's an array. We're saying position zero and position one, and that's array wording. It is, but it's our arguments are are an array, but in this case, the first element of the array is going to be an array. So argument zero is an array. So argument zero would be a whole array. So argument zero, zero will get us to the first element in the first element of the arguments array. Yeah, no idea why you're saying that an array has an array inside it. Okay, why so the, it arguments, an array? the arguments are always an array. So if you oh, give oh, no argument. Oh, wait a minute, because they, it, there's two values for each one. So it has to be an array in an array. It's right. two-dimensional. Yes, in this case, it's, well... It is two-dimensional, but possibly not for the reason you think. So the first dimension is just the arguments array, and then the second dimension is the array that is the first argument. So argument zero, if, if it makes more sense, I can do it like this. I can say var the array equals arguments zero. Because remember, we're saying we pass an array as the first argument, so we just pull it out. Then we can say new real equals the array zero and the array one. Does that make more sense? Nope. Because you no, haven't okay. explained to me what I said I thought I knew. You said, no, you don't. And then you started typing again. So <laughs> what I said, was, what I thought I understood briefly until you said I didn't, was that it's two-dimensional because each element in the array has two values. Each element in the array has two well, values. Well, because it's, it's got a real and an imaginary. But there's only one real and imaginary. So it's okay, arguments no, I don't is an array. You're right. So arguments is an array, which has a length of one. Where did the... Okay, it, arguments is a word you made up, or that's a sacred Ar word? 
sacred word, special word. Inside any function, arguments gives you access to all the arguments that were passed when the function is called. So when when you say my number dot parse, you're going to give it some arguments for it to try and understand, and okay. they're going to be accessible as arguments. And zero, arguments one, two, is three. always an array. Arguments is always an array. Yes. Okay, but we're going to pass another array to it. Yes. So if you if we if we call our parse function with an array as the one and only argument, well then arguments zero is an array, which contains then two things. So argument zero is always the first argument, even if that argument is an array. So you may have an array that contains an array, which is exactly what we have here. So which is why we have okay. this. Okay. Let's keep going. I'm hoping I'm maybe not sure. you have an example that will explain that. That it'll well, be we are because we're going to. I'm going to write this. I'm going to resimplify this if that's okay. Um, we are going to test. We're going to have to test our function. We can't just assume it works. Right. right? That's what I was saying. Maybe your examples that you test it with, I'll be able to understand what you're saying. I hope so. Uh, usually, seeing code work is more illuminating than seeing code sit. <laughs> okay. So now. What we've written, <laughs> if arguments out length uh, is identically equal to two, uh, we've got new real is that of that's oh it becomes argument. Okay, you're still typing. Yeah, I'm just putting in comments. I know, but yeah. if you're typing, I can't read. Oh, so hold okay. up, hold up it's for everybody. If arguments out length is identically equal to two, then new real is a variable we've already defined up above. We say new real is equal to uh, arguments. Uh, yeah, you might want to turn off notifications. I was say if we slide over and we go, where's that so magic do not disturb on button? Click back on notifications. Yeah, there we, we go. go. Do not disturb. Okay. Good day. All right. One more time. So if arguments out length is identically equal to two, we've already got new real and new imaginary variables we've defined. So new real becomes arguments position zero, new imaginary is arguments position one. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm there. Else, and this would be the case since our only other condition is we've got an array. Yes. Then new real becomes arguments square bracket, zero square bracket, square bracket, zero square bracket. And the second one, new imaginary is square bracket, zero square bracket one. Huh. Yes. Okay. So if I highlight this bit here, square arguments zero will point to the array because we're saying if it is an array. Okay. And then another set of square brackets says go into that and give me the zeroth element. Huh. Have we seen that writing before like that? With we have. We there? probably have. Okay. It looks vaguely familiar, but I wouldn't have thought of it. Okay. I'm with you now. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. da, 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 da. So that's all saying. And then we're saying if it's valid, mature yeah, it's all saying. The, not goofiness. Save it or save the new values. Okay. So we now have two out of four taken care of, I think. Okay. If we go back here. So we're saying two numbers as arguments, an array of two numbers as a single argument. Okay. There, those two are done. Tick. A string of the form bleedy 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 blee. We're positive or negative, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now, now things get more difficult. Okay, so. so else, we're going to take if, care of this. Uh, oh. Hmm. I thought it. I thought you would start typing before the save of the new values. I thought that would be the last step of every one of these. Um, may, well, it all depends on how you architect your code. You could architect it. Let me think about this. You could architect it that way, I suppose. Yeah, actually, you can do that. Uh, okay. Well, then we don't want to say if arguments at length equals two or. Yeah. Oh well, don't well, don't cause... don't don't change hmm. that again. That'll be really confusing if we have to change. That will that. be really confusing. Yeah, okay. I, I, I was thinking of it sort of as two numbers. We we'll deal with that case, and then we'll deal with the string, and then we'll deal with the other stuff. Okay. So we'll say if else if argument. That's spelled right. Yeah. Okay. Change color. Good. Are we going to ask if it's the type is a string? Uh, yes. So if type of. Look at me. Type of arguments zero is exactly equal to string. In single quotes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put this. I'm going to. Right, we'll come back to that. I'm going to build out the full structure here. 
Okay. So we can see the full structure. So now he's jumped down and he started the else condition. Okay. So our other possibility then, what's our fourth possibility? <laughs> ah, yes. Our fourth possibility is that we have another complex number as our input. Okay. So else if arguments zero instance of complex number. And then the final possibility is that it's just absolute garbage that we can't understand. Hmm. I thought we already dealt with the garbage. Well, we don't know. We dealt with some of the garbage, right? We said that if there were exactly two arguments... And we they got that no, whole is nan stuff. Right, but that's only happening if to we go into two. this if, right? Okay. It's only happening for those two cases. So this is a generic... Maybe you gave me no arguments. Maybe you gave me a thousand arguments. Maybe you gave me an argument that's... I don't know, some sort of weird thing. Okay. I, like, so well, always... I do like watching you do this because I'm watching you... Uh, think out the structure and then put in what do you do about it yeah and see when we did the first one two weeks ago all this was semi-recent in my head i've completely forgotten how my sample solutions work now so i really am reinventing the wheel here good uh, throw new error in valid arguments again not being particularly verbose today that's fine okay so okay now this is the fourth one we're doing wait oh we're gonna okay do we do the, the third one number. first, the uh, string one first? Uh, I was going to do the easy one and get that out of the way and then go the back to the hard the last one. one. Okay, all right. Last so the one's easy, easy one is the instance of complex number. Yeah, because if it is a complex number, we already know. Ooh, I guess we, we know. Oh, we know exactly what it's going to look like. We know we? exactly what it is. We don't. We don't have to worry about sanitizing it. It's all been pre-sanitized for us because we have our accessor method, so we can just say this dot underscore real equals. That's a minus. Argument. Yes, it is becomes equal to arguments zero dot real using our accessor method. And we can say this dot underscore imaginary becomes equal to arguments zero dot imaginary, assuming I can spell. Okay. So, so that that's calling the... Why are there parentheses after real and imaginary? You aren't calling a function there, are you? We are most certainly calling a function. Oh, go so to the top again. We have some. We, we have defined these functions. So we are saying that they exist here. Oh, they exist here, imaginary. So these are our accessor methods yes. for okay. reading in and out. Good. So we want to read out. Got so it. We're just, Got it. Yeah. So we're calling our accessor without any arguments. We're saying, yeah, read it out. Argument zero is a complex number. So read out the real bit. Okay. Argument zero is, yeah. So read out the imaginary bit. And okay. then store them, so it becomes equal to. So that's easy, right? And this is where the hard work begins. Okay, and what he's pointing to yeah. now is the string piece. Right, so we got to deal with the string. Now, there are lots of different ways we could slice this, but I am going to use my best friend, the word, the word regular expression. Oh, dear. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this, is, this is why I decided we would get the easy stuff done. So our whole function is ready, apart from this bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so deal with the string. And and the string is just someone's typed in the text, three plus five i. Yes. Now I have said actually I want the parentheses there, so a string of the form paren, paren a plus b i or a minus b i. So I have been a okay. bit strict here. All right. If I was being evil, evil, I would I would be I would accept like twenty different possible patterns. But I'm only accepting. But I think you've been patterns. just evil enough here. Yeah, I I, I thought I'd be nice to people, so. <laughs> This is your version of nice. I think it's torture, but okay, keep going. Okay, so if something happens, we'll, we'll figure that out in a minute. So how do we do a regular expression? Well, we have a match function. Let's let's go check our... So you're flipping over to your... Uh... I am going to read my own notes, JS Miscellany. I can't believe I've got bookmarks to this stuff and you don't. <laughs> Mathematical regular expressions. Thank you. Do, 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 do. Uh, so, He's okay. So, it is regular expression uh, lessons. Perfect. That's what I want. I want my matching. So, that means we're going to use the exec function. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. I just had to refresh myself. Okay. And you were at the, the miscellany one? Yes, I am. So, create a regular expression. 
to match imaginary numbers. So var IMG or E, that's as good a name as any, equals pattern. Okay, starts with and ends with. That's easy. Well, so we know wait, it has. Okay, so in regular expression speak, can, I always can you move do your this. Cursor, it's on top of your. There, there you go. Thank you. Okay, so I always start my regular expressions by just putting starts with ends with. Because so I know starts, I'm going to want that. So starts with was slash caret. Well, okay, with so, dollar slash. Okay, no. So the, 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 the two slashes are the start and end of the whole regular expression. Okay. And then the caret symbol or whatever you want to call it is start of the string you're matching. And okay. dollar is the end of the string. So we don't want any... We're not going to accept, accept say, boogers, parens, and then a valid number. We actually want the parens to be the very, very first thing. So we're, we're not going to be too forgiving here. Okay. So we need a parens. And so the easiest way to match a parens is just to match a parens inside square brackets. Now, we could do that. And we could either do backslash parens, which I don't like, or we can do the character class parens. Which you're putting inside square brackets. So in, a square bracket means a character class. So any one of the following characters is acceptable. So there are open okay. and close. Uh, this is where you're crazy that this makes sense. So he's just written I square know. bracket, left paren, right square bracket, left square bracket, right paren, right square bracket. <laughs> Which you should read as match exactly a bracket. So, okay, okay a paren, a parenthesis. <laughs> not confuse ourselves completely here. Okay, okay. so what do, so then we need to have one or more digits. So slash D is digit. One or more is plus. So that's one or more digits. Now, there might be a minus sign here, mightn't there? Perfectly valid to have a minus sign in front of ours. Sure. Minus 4i. So we could have the symbol minus, which may or may not exist. Do you remember zero or one occurrences of? I remember you saying those words and typing a bunch of stuff on the screen with brackets and such. Okay, question mark means it may or may not be there. So we may or may not have a minus sign. Then we have one, zero, sorry, one or more digits. Then we need a sp Space. That's a space. Then we need either a plus or a minus. Now we need a space. No, we don't. Do we? Oh, yeah, we do need a space according to what I said. Let me look at my own. Yeah, okay, we do need a space. Plus or minus followed by a space followed by one or more digits. So believe it or not, that's the regular expression we need. So you don't need to go through it all again, but what would you, what would the basic idea of how you would do that without using regu regular expressions? Well, the other way I guess you could do it would be to, to, to start splitting the string. So you might say, give, is the first character a parentheses? Is the last character a parentheses? Okay, cut those two off. Yeah. So like my slice function that I learned from Codecademy? Yeah, so you could slice the first bit off and make sure it's a parentheses and then throw that away. And then slice the end off, make sure it's a parentheses and throw that away. Uh, and then you'd want to slice off the, the first few bits until you meet a space, I guess, and then see if that's a number and save that. And then you'd see if you've got a plus or a minus and then save that and then see if the next bit was a number and save okay. that. It would be, you could do it, you know, you slice by slice, nibble it. And as soon as you meet something that's garbage, stop, because it doesn't matter why it's wrong. If it's wrong, it's wrong. You know, call it a day. We're done. All right. Um, so I, I do prefer regular expressions, though. And the, the key point is you build them up like I just talked through it. So you start with the two ends and you just start building up what you want. Now, we need to gather up pieces of this. So we want to group pieces using parentheses. So the first piece I want is the first number. So I'm going to put that inside parens. Then I want and to know the, the same parens you were talking about a minute ago because they're not inside square brackets. Correct. And that the reason I have to put the parens in square brackets is so they don't get confused with the real see so parens has a meaning within a regular expression, which is a group. So I want I'm going I want three things I want to know. I want to know a number, a symbol, and a number. So I have made three groups by putting parens around the three bits I care about. And they're going to come out as the first match, second match, and third match. So I am G or E. Dot. I have made a commitment to learn as work as hard as I can to learn everything you've taught me, but I'm not learning this. That is fine. That <laughs> is. I go ahead and type. That was optional. So <laughs> maybe I'll uh, set the video to fast forward to this part. Well, somebody else might care. Okay. So the result. No, the, the, there are people who may love regular expressions as much as me. Okay. <laughs>
So we're going to take our regular expression and we're going to execute it against arguments zero, which is our string. And then, so the way this works is that the result is either going to be equal to null if there was no match or there is going to be a match. So if the result is not equal to null, then we know it was all good. Let me, ooh, wrong one. I'm going to do that at least once. Let me go back you to the. You just lost your $5. Uh, $5? I bet you five bucks you couldn't do it reliably the whole show. You don't remember that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so not, e not okay, I can, be, I can be more strict. I can be not triple, not exactly not equal to. Okay, so if that's all good, then we can say uh, this dot underscore real equals result one for our first match. This dot underscore imaginary equals result three. And we need to be a little careful here because if it was a negative number, we need to make imaginary be negative. So we need to say if result two is exact is equal to the minus symbol, then we say that this dot imaginary becomes equal to zero minus sorry, becomes equal to zero minus itself, right? So if it was three, then it becomes equal to zero minus three, which is minus three. Does that make right. sense? Yep. Yeah. The, the, strangely enough, I find the math harder than anything else. <laughs> but that, my, my math is right, right? We'll find out. We'll find out. So there we have our string matched. Okay, that was evil, but not long. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually... That's all I just the went case. over red email for a little while. I'm just telling you. <laughs> okay, so we okay, have you now. Okay, let me just double check. But I think we have done our four things. Two numbers yeah. as arguments. We did that. An array of two numbers. We did that. A string. We did that. And an object. We did that. Okay. So let us test our parse function with this code. So. Uh, nope. Nope. Wrong button. Double. double, you, know, double. you know there's one you don't have to do that. Hover over, uh, hover over it again. I, yeah, I know. The that means one, no, no, keep going. Keep going. That one. Hit no nope, that back one. Hit that one. Nope, back one. Okay. The one that, that one. says copy, just hit it and it highlights it too. And so huh. you just hit command C. Okay, we'll have it now. So this is then we see how many typos I made. So then what is this uh what does this code say that we told it to do? Okay, so we are now going to test the parse function we have hopefully correctly written. So the first thing is we say Construct a new complex number and print it out. So that should just print zero because our complex numbers always start at zero for now. Test the two number form. So then we're going to say cn.parse two comma four and then print it out. Okay. Then we're going to test the array form. So we pass it the array minus three five point five. And then we print it out, and hopefully that will have worked. And we're doing, by and, the way, that we're using PBS that say CN3.2 string, where we built two string in our. Yes. So we're going to always use two string to turn it into a string. Yeah. So then we do the difficult one, and we test all these different strings 2 plus 6i, 2 minus 6i, minus 2.76 plus 6.2i. And hopefully they'll all two string. Oh. Ooh, I already see some problems with my code, but I'm going to continue as if there aren't. Okay. Because um, uh, this is good. Uh, and then test the complex number object. So we're just going to pass it in a new complex number into the parse function. You didn't try passing it garbage. Uh, we can do that if you like. Uh, CN 3 dot parse. Actually, we'll do that in a minute because that's going okay. to throw an error. And then that'll just stop our code. So let's see how much of this is working and how broken this is. Oh. Instance of, yeah, that's because I can't spell. See, in my brain, in my brain, instance of should be capitalized. However, in reality, it isn't. Oh. It's instance of. Instance. Oh, put the O in. I'm hitting the O key and there's nothing happening. Is my O key broken? That's interesting. Is my O key broken or is 
the playground is typing a it. different program a uh, different button no okay it seems like i cannot type in here anymore try copying it all first before you do anything else that's interesting maybe you just hit the uh length of it that's weird no because you had you had a zero, no because i've kept a yeah. okay instance f yeah okay instance f Good. definitely doesn't exist <laughs> Not for so now we're looking for instance. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's not oh. working, huh? No, I think okay, this time try not to run it first. Yeah, exactly. So instance. Okay. What? Oh. Okay. Is it just what is the universe is not making sense? Oh, there it goes. Oh, now well, you uh, got instance true. oof. <laughs> Yeah. How did you bring it, it, was, get it to start working? I, it seems that I hadn't fully deselected the search. It seemed to be still stuck in the search. That was very strange. Okay, oh. let's see what other. Oh, interesting. Let's see what other typos I have. I'm sure <laughs> okay. there's more. Oh, there's another one of those. Okay. <laughs> Might as well do a find all instance of. Oh yeah, three um, times. Instance of. Instance. There it is. is that capital. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So you it did is. it right one, uh, right once and wrong twice. That is really weird that That's it's a bug. And so a for people who are listening, he's he's typing an O, but it's typing it up in the um, in the that search fine. bar. That fine. Yeah, you're good now. Okay. Now we'll have a different. Oh, OK. Well, we have we're having issues here. This is not working exactly as it should, but we have why some stuff. It? it looks like it's working. Oh, it's doing something. I'm not sure it's doing the right thing. So let's see why it's not doing this. OK, so your first one is just first off, empty. Zero, zero. Fine. Okay, so no zero. problems as far as here. All good. The two number form, two comma four, two four i. Right. All good. The array form, minus three five point five i. Looks perfect. Fine. And our string one is broke. Did he broke? So <laughs> string the string was. Oh, it's just repeating what it had before. Oh, interesting. Is. So that's because it it never became. Yeah, because we didn't put an else here. Ah. See here. Throw new error or could not parse string. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's been day to day. Yeah. <laughs> now we know what day Bart takes the trash out. Yeah, and every second, one week it's recycling, the next week it's real stuff. And it's interesting, okay. too, that it disobeyed your, uh, you turned on do not disturb. Yeah, I did. That's Why interesting. Do that? Okay. Okay, uh, still not working. Still not working, but it's not. So it's not jumping it's not to the next like one. like I was expecting, yeah. It's remembering the previous this dot underscore real because it hasn't become the new one. Yeah. I'm so which one is it getting confused. stuck on? Was it the string Oops. one that you put in? Oh, I'm just a silly booger. I sometimes do silly things. When you tack the else onto the wrong if, it doesn't do what you think. Okay. Because it means something completely different. Okay, now I'm expecting sanity to return in the form of a giant big error. Because there we go. Giant big error. Okay, sanity has returned. And the, and so you knew it was going to screw up because you noticed an error in your it, it code of the test? I was pretty sure this is what was happening. I was pretty sure the reason it wasn't changing was because the regular expression wasn't catching. So we've made a mistake in our regular expression. Oh, let me debug that for you, Bart. Okay, so the slash yeah. at the beginning and the end means something, and you got the carrot and the dollar means the beginning and the end. Yeah, the slash okay, is so... not we had a regular expression, and I lost you after that. Okay, Actually, let me so... see if I can see it. So we expect to see a parenthesis, and then uh, the next set of parentheses is to, that's our first part of the expression. Yeah, we're expecting maybe a minus slash D plus. Now we're expecting a space. Then we're expecting. Why plus wasn't there a question mark with that one? Was what I was going to ask if uh, with the plus minus. Uh, well, because it's one or the other. Oh, it has to be one or the other. And the first yeah. minus with the question mark means it shouldn't be, but it might have that. Why wouldn't you do it yeah, the same zero, way? Why wouldn't zero you have... or what? Well, it's no, oh, because it might be nothing. Yeah, it could be nothing, exactly. Okay. Like, four is fine. Gotcha. Minus four is also fine. Okay, but on the next one, it's got to be a plus or a minus. Okay, and then we get another parenthesis. Then we get a space. 
Our last piece is the slash D plus, which means one or more digits. So that and then a looks parenthesis. awfully correct to me. And it's not matching. So what else could be wrong? Could it be the input? Let's let's go down and look at see if you've got spaces or something in it. The two parentheses two plus six i. Do the quotes? That, that one, okay. Are the quotes supposed oh, to be there? Oh, Allison, 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 Allison. What? We've forgotten the i. Ah. <laughs> should the i be inside that little parenthesis? It should be there. We don't want to capture it. Ah. We want to capture what goes before the i, but the i still is part it. of the pattern, so the i needs to be here. Okay. Do you like that maybe... I actually was able to read it? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, <laughs> now we're still going to run into trouble, but we'll have one more good line before we have trouble. Okay, because the two next... more good lines before we have trouble, uh, and then so we, we get a problem. Two, of, so two of the six plus eyes. Six here's plus. where we hit our problems now. Okay, so it's not sure what to do with the decimal. Yeah, because our pattern has no mention of them. Oh. No mention of them whatsoever. So we could have here a period followed a by. A question mark? Yeah. yeah, it will be in a moment. It'll be a period followed by one or more digits, and then all of it gets question marked. Okay. Because otherwise you could have a period just hanging there. It should yeah. be a bit weird. Copy and paste that piece, would you? Just in case Copy it's wrong, we paste. do it wrong twice the same way. Wait, you didn't yeah, get the parenthesis. Yeah, consistently wrong. You uh, missed a parenthesis on the no, far right. I didn't. Oh, no, no, no. Gotcha. Yeah, you're right. It's not easy to tell that I didn't, but I didn't. <laughs> now, oh, we have... Okay, so that myself. pattern will match, but now our numbers are out, so let's count the opening brackets. You're still one. You're now two. You're now three. So what was two becomes three, and what was three almost certainly becomes four. Yes, it does. Uh, because we've added more parentheses, our numbering has changed. Okay. That's the part when I was doing my email right there. Okay. Ready. So in theory, we should have no more errors and this should now work and pass our test. Way! I think. Mm, not way. Should the last one be 3, 4, I? No, it shouldn't. Unless you rounded it. Oh, no, it should be. 3, 4. Sorry. Line 186. Oh, line, line, line. Fine. Okay. Okay, good. Yay. Our code passes our tests. And this is this is how it really works, folks, right? When you're really programming, you make mistakes <laughs> and you write test cases. Don't assume your function works. Test it. Yeah, you know, the one thing that bothers me with testing, and Steve and I were talking about this recently, the company I used to work for would work on some new project and they want, would want people to test the code. And they would give us a list of things to test. They would say, click here, click here, click here, write down what you get. And I'd always tell them, I said, I'm not going to do that. Because if you wrote those instructions, you already did that. I'm going to go in and just flail around in the program and see what I can get to break. And everybody else would dutifully go, oh, yeah, it all worked perfectly. And I'd come back with this plethora of weird cases that caused problems that they didn't think of. Yeah, at this level of testing, we're not, we're not really testing the UI. We're actually testing the function. So at this case, what oh, you but need I'd find to things test... that broke. I don't mean UI. I mean, I could crash it and do all kinds of things. What you want when you're testing functions is you want a list of inputs and outputs. So, you know, like we have here, can we deal with minus numbers? Can we deal with de with decimal points? And stuff? Oh, sure. But this would be like the test that they would write. And then Allison would go and run the same program <laughs> and type in boogers, which you haven't tested for. True. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. That's all right, though. Now, so, so if we, we actually finished... Have... We have, well, we've done seven. Test your parse function with the following code. Good. Okay, okay eight. Now let's make our constructor more smart. Mm -hmm. So we've now written this parse function, and it has all of these brains. It knows how to deal with all these different things. So wouldn't it be nice if we could update our constructor so that it gained all of that intelligence that we've just written? Hmm. So instead of having to say var... So instead of having to say var, let me see, where is our sample code here? Var cn equals new complex number, and then say cn dot parse two comma four. Why don't we just say new complex number two comma four? Wouldn't that be easier? Yeah, but it doesn't know for parse. A, right. Well, yeah. Right. We haven't written that into the constructor, so we're now going to update our constructor to to give it that intelligence. We've put in the work here by writing parse, so now we can use parse, and 
this is the point where your brain may mildly explode <laughs> because we're going to scroll up. Sometimes I think you punish me for understanding too much. You go find something else to hurt me. <laughs> Arguments. I'm going to update my comment here. Same as parse. So we're going to... So we're going to the okay. very top of the code now, and he just changed his comment to say that so, the arguments can be same as parse. Yeah, I'm going to say if no... So default to zero, zero. Right, just that seems okay. like a same default. And now we're going to say uh, deal with arguments. So if... Arguments.length double equals one. I'm going to say this I, dot. Can, I'm, can I stop you, Bert? You can. Do Are we going to not need all that code we wrote? Oh, well, what code? All the stuff no. that we wrote today, which was dealing with arguments down below. You're saying oh, yeah. you're going to. Oh, no, no, we're not deleting it. No, no, we're leveraging it. We're calling oh, our. Because our this. Function. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Because this stuff isn't linear. You can't, you this can. This stuff is linear. Yes. Stop typing, we're stop typing. Don't, no, no, you're cheating typing while I'm asking questions. Um, so we can go back up to this, this function at the very beginning called complex number. And we can now use that stuff we wrote at the end of the code because that, that stuff down at the end calls this after you give it all that information, even though this was written first on the piece of paper. Right, because nothing really happens until we say new complex number anyway. Yeah, that's going to take me a while to get used to, but I get it. I get it. I caught yes. up. Okay, yeah, now you that's just the bit that may explode your head. So that's we got that out of the way. Good. Okay, so but now you we're just typed say, a bunch of stuff, and I don't know what it means yet. Okay, so if we got one argument into our constructor, just pass it on. Just say this dot parse with the same argument. Just hand it on. Argument zero is the first argument. Uh else if if we got two arguments pass those on to arguments dot length spelt right isn't it t h mm -hmm. yeah double equals two okay, triple equals exactly, well okay. exactly equals it I'm trying to get into the habit of exactly equals because it's better we can say this dot parse arguments zero arguments one so what we're doing is we're saying if if the constructor was given arguments just call the parse function with those same arguments either one of them or two of them i don't know what this is doing oh, then i don't let's know why we're enacted. doing it ah because i okay so let's this is what we used to have to do so we used to say var my cn equals new complex number and then we had to say my cn dot real three. Okay. And we, we had to say my it, right? cn. So what are you going to well, type? No, okay. Four. And then we can do a pbs dot say my cn dot two string. Right? And well, that works. Right. Three, four, I. I can okay. replace those three lines with one line. Show me what that line is going to look like. Huh. If. So what we're saying is when we're building our object at the point we're constructing it, we may as well say what we'd like. Rather than constructing it and then giving it a value, why don't we give it an initial value that's actually what we want? And the only way to do that is to give arguments to the constructor. And the only way that that can work is if the constructor has the brains to do something with those arguments. And we've already written the parse function, which has all that brains in it. So let's just use it. Let's hand sure the work off. It seems like you could have called function complex number and it's, you know, go back up to the top. Mm -hmm. It sure this feels top? to me like you should have been able to say function complex number, and instead of leaving putting no arguments between the parentheses, you could have put real comma imaginary. Okay, but then it would only work that way. Because we're calling parse, it will also work like this. I can also say three. The three plus four plus I. Four okay, because, I. because we've built all this other logic that says we can put in. Uh, strings and all kinds of other stuff. Okay. Yeah. 
So that's so basically we put a lot of work into that parse function. Okay. So let's leverage it. Let's use it. And that's a very, very common model. So you write the brains to interpret input once, call it parse, because that's just what people call these things, and then use it anytime you need that functionality, including in the constructor. Hmm. So don't write it twice. Don't write a constructor that then parses everything and then a parse function that parses everything. Write it once, so use we it don't, twice. We don't eliminate any code. We add a nope. little more code to say just make it easier to input into the function. Yeah, just okay. make it easier to set the initial value. So okay, that can I is... read the top again? Can you read now, the top? Now that Absolutely. I understand what it's for, I want to, now I want to read it, what it says. It says, if arguments at length identically equal to one, this stuff parse arguments zero. And that's... So arguments zero is the first argument because we count from zero because we're special. But we have... There's always two arguments, the real and the mm -hmm. imaginary number. No, there's one argument here, right? This is an argument that is oh. a string. So this, yeah. in this case, it's yeah. arguments that length is one. So in we go, we pass that string through. Okay. And, and if, if we did it... two of something, then do the other exactly. one. Exactly. Exactly. Then we pass the two through. Oh, huh. okay. It's as I say, well, all we're just doing is we're just plumbing. It's like we're just connecting it together. Right? We're saying, if you gave me two things, I'm going to give two things to parse. If you gave me one thing, I'm going to give one thing to parse. Okay. And off we go. Oh, so we've just basically, we've gotten a lot of value there for very little typing. Yeah. So update your constructor so it can accept the same arguments as the parse function. Do not copy and paste the code. Instead, update the constructor to check if there is one or two arguments. And if there are, call the parse function with the appropriate arguments. That's what we did. Test our constructor. Okay, well, let's give it a good old-fashioned test then. Is it that one? No, it's that one. That one. Yeah. If you hit that one, you still have to command C. It even tells you. Isn't that cute? I know. I have more experience okay. with this than you do. <laughs> well, I usually write it. it. I don't usually run it. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let's have a look at our test. Test the two number format. So we're saying new complex number one comma two and then two stringing it. One, two. Okay. Test the one array format. So square, square two comma three. That worked. Test the one string two minus six i, two minus six i, and test with a complex number. New Okay. It all worked. All worked. Test passed. I like when tests pass. Okay. So now we can easily two string our numbers. We can easily set the value. So we now have the ability to make any complex number we want, but it has no brains yet. How do I add two complex numbers together? Well, you don't. You become a mechanical engineer instead because you don't believe in them. <laughs> <laughs> That is an easy way out. Let us try to not do that. Let's let's try to um, actually make this. So let's get rid of our test code. So complex complex number dot prototype with one y dot but you add the t prototype. Okay. Actually, this is what we all need: is someone to watch us type to go. No, uh, uh. There, it's of array is a lowercase o. It's called the buddy system. Maths is supposed to be math library, right? Yeah, well, that's actually called the buddy system of programming, and it's done in places really? where it's important. Yeah, huh. you have a coding buddy who sits with you and works through your help. You know, so you're, you're spotting each other's mistakes. Get a bit like a pilot and a co-pilot, I guess. Yeah, one, one of them can fly the plane, but the other one's there to make sure they don't crash into a hill. <laughs> Okay, uh, so da, 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 yeah. prototype. Read, read this out loud. Add a function named add to the complex number prototype, accepts one argument, a complex number object, and adds it to the object the function is called on. Why do you always talk in circles? That's a circle. <laughs> well, we are in a circle, to... right? Because you're, you, you have a complex number and you want to add a complex number to it. So yeah. there's okay. two complex numbers in the equation. All right. Why don't you just say and add them together? Well, no, because you're going to have, so you're going to start off with complex number one, which has a value. And then you're going to say, add complex number two to me. So yeah. when you're finished, number one is going to contain the result of the addition. So the first complex number is, the, is an object, and then you're going to add another one to it. Okay. Yeah. So the, the way the, you do that is you add the two real parts together and the imaginary parts. Correct, Amundo. Okay. Well, that was, okay. So I'm going to call it CN. I'm going to call my, my argument CN for complex number because I don't want to type out a long name. Is that okay? okay. It is wonderful. Okay, so we're going to say if 
see an instance of complex number. So in other words, if we were past the complex number, then we can do our adding. Otherwise, we've got to get cranky. Otherwise, we say throw new error. I right, know type error. I'm being very unimaginative in my errors today. So we add the two real parts. So we say this dot underscore real becomes equal to cn dot real. No, well, almost becomes there. <laughs> Are you going to allow me to plus equals? Yeah, I'm I'm all over plus equals now, but I'm not sure Excellent. why because it doesn't it isn't anything yet. Why well, you wouldn't have just done equals to start with because it's plus equals later, right? Uh, well, no. So this is the add function. So we're, we're adding at this stage in the game, the object exists, so it has a value. So we are plus equalsing, right? We're saying that whatever's inside us becomes w whatever it was plus the real but what's part. In what's inside it right now? Uh, that entirely depends at what point you call add, right? Uh... Remember, nothing happens until we say go. We're just I saying know. if someone says to add, this is what you do, and you say whatever is in me now. Make it but bigger. There's nothing, in it. there's nothing in you because all you've got is what you just started with, which is CN. And we've already got, you're saying add plus. Okay, e but this, we're adding this function to the two. We're saying that every complex number will have the ability to have something added to it. Oh, that's what you meant. So an existing complex number. Yes. Yes. yes oh, yes. you never said that. Number. Okay. That's what I tried to say. I yeah, need to find a physiology okay. that works. All right. Uh, so the imaginary number becomes equal to itself plus cn dot imaginary. Okay, that is that, I think. Let's test that. It seems too easy. So, uh, so, so where's the first? Where's the first one coming from? Okay, so. The first one isn't the, the, so we need to make an imaginary number with our constructor. So we say var my cn equals new complex number. Uh, give me two numbers, Alison. Six comma negative seven. Six minus seven. Okay. And then we're going to say, uh, okay, I'm going to be very boring. Let's say n1, eh, cn1. So cn2 is a new complex number. Uh, two more numbers. Negative four, comma, negative three. Okay, so we're adding minus numbers. You're making life difficult for yourself here, but okay. <laughs> yeah, but I know what it should be. It should be, it should be two uh, minus ten <laughs> i. Yes. Yes, okay. it should. Okay. But so varcn so one, say, we gave it some values. Varcn two, we gave it some values. So now we can say cn one should have cn two added to it. So cn1.add oh, cn2. Hang on, hang on. Let that rest for a second. So he typed cn1 plus add parentheses dot, cn2. Dot, what? cn1.add. Dot, dot add, sorry. cn1.add. So we use the add function. That's in our prototype. Uh, to say, start with cn1 and go throw a cn2 on top of it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never would have thought to do that in about 8 million years. Okay. This is why we have these examples, right? Because whether we're doing complex numbers or something else, the concepts remain the same. So we're saying all complex numbers have the ability to have another complex number added to them. So mm -hmm. we're adding it to the prototype. So now we can do a PBS dot say on CN one dot two string. And what did you say we should see? I said uh, we should see two minus ten i. Two minus ten i. Two minus ten i. Look at that. So our add function works, okay? I have a feeling we can copy and paste for the subtract function and just do some minor tweaks. Pretty sure that's what I said to do next. In a similar vein, add a function called subtract. Okay. <laughs> we can copy that one and paste it, right? Yeah, I already copied and pasted. So we're calling it subtract, and then we're saying minus equals and minus equals. And I'm just going to sort of assume that that worked because we have test code coming up in a little bit. Now, multiply by. This is this is where things get evil. So I know we're going to make one call. Did you just run it? I, I away for a didn't bother, to be honest. I ran it. There's no errors, but I didn't I didn't do all typey-typey. Oh, and you erased our previous typey-typey. 
I did, which I wish I hadn't. Okay. Okay, now we do the hard part. We've got to write a multiply by function. Oops. Oh, and that's hard because multiplying we have to complex how to numbers multiply complex numbers. Evil. Yeah. So complex number dot prototype dot multiply. Oh, dot proto. I've gotten very lost here in typing type <laughs> prototype. Yeah. Multiply? Dot multiply by. Okay. Equals Can you remind us before you go too much further? Mm -hmm. What uh how do you multiply two complex numbers? Ah, this is okay. So if you uh, right, so to multiply by, there's a rule which is written down. You can either get it from first principles, which is evil and horrible, and I wouldn't urge anyone to do it. Uh, but it's basically if you have a plus b i multiplied by c plus d i, the answer is a c minus b d plus a b plus b c i. Basically, I'm just going to implement this rule blindly and assume that the mathematics is correct. That's kind of interesting. It's almost like uh, well, so it's sort of like multiplying two. Um... I believe Two it's called a cross product. Together. Yeah, cross products. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to blindly follow this rule. So I'm going to need an A, a B, a C, and a D. So let's create an A. Actually, okay. Very first thing, I'm going to copy and paste our let's check to see that they didn't give us garbage rule. Okay. So we're going to need an A, a B, a C, and a D. So var A equals something. We'll fill it in later. Var. Yeah, interesting when you're off by one on your keyboard, the var becomes a bat. <laughs> Var B equals something. Okay. Var C equals something. And var, var D equals something. So now let's go back and look at what our somethings have to be. So A is going to be the real part of our first number. So A is this dot real. What's B? B is the imaginary part. Okay, so this dot imaginary. What's C? C is the real part of the second number, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So C is CN dot real. Wait, wait. Okay, so okay, so A and A and B are of the existing imaginary yes. uh, complex number. Okay. Yes. That's why I called it multiply by, just to right, sort yeah. of say I have one and I'm multiplying it by the other. And then CN dot imaginary we are going to call D. Okay. Okay. And now we can say that this dot underscore real becomes equal to when does it become equal to a Why don't you copy that into a note into a comment and we don't have to keep going back and forth that's a great idea actually that's just a really good idea just from a pure if i was doing this for real i most certainly would yeah that's what i do with all when i'm trying to do it on my own is i copy and paste your instructions so i don't have to go back and forth all Bink. right there we go and if i if i was doing this for you know, for work or something, I would either have a link to a web page explaining how you multiply, or I would have a comment <laughs> like this. But I would certainly have some sort of explain what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So real becomes equal to a multiplied by c. A c minus b star d. And That's correct, isn't it? Uh huh. And then this dot underscore imaginary becomes equal to a times d. This is the part I e like, by the way. Times c. And then just because I know technically, I would have driven me crazy not to put the parentheses in first. Technically speaking, you don't have to put the parentheses in because the laws of precedence, blah 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 blah. Yeah, but, but no, you better. No. <laughs> None of us actually believe in those laws. <laughs> it's also it just makes the code easier to maintain. There's no doubt what I meant. Yeah. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, but and then the down, we, none of us really do believe it. <laughs> that is also true, or else we can't remember, and we're too lazy to go look up the documentation. <laughs> So the last thing we have is something called a conjugate. And a conjugate of, a, of, a, of an imaginary number is very straightforward. Wait, it's we aren't going to test that one? No, it's okay. We're going to test them all here. I have okay. test code and here. No, we don't know what the right answers are anyway. So. That's a fair point. Actually, I'll start working on the arithmetic while you do that. Uh, conjugate is a nice easy one. 2 plus 3i becomes 2 minus 3i. And 2 minus 3i becomes 2 plus 3i. Basically, you flip the sign is what you do conjugate. to conjugate. Yeah. What is a so, conjugate for? 
It's huh. the first step towards a division. And then I saw the mathematics for an actual division and decided to stop the assignment there. <laughs> Bless your little heart. <laughs> but I did. So I figured conjugate is easy, right? It was just a bit of basic mathematics. So we can do that. So dot conjugate of. This function should. Now, this one is a little bit different to what we've done before. So, we're, right. So let's just we we'll get back to the English in a second. I'm just going to put my foundation in place function blah de blah okay now let's go back to the english a function named conjugate of to the complex number prototype this function should return a new complex number object with the sign of the imaginary part flipped so we're not altering ourselves we're returning a new complex number so that's slightly different to what we've done before okay so there Okay. Yeah. So we know we're going to say we're going to say var var conj that'll do equals new complex number. Okay, great. That bit's easy. Now what? What should be in this new complex number? We know we're going to return conjugate, but now we got to actually figure out what to do. Well, the real part never changes, right? I'm I'm confused by something. We've never returned yeah. anything else before. Why are we suddenly returning? Because I said here the magic word. This function should return. Okay, and we never told you. Never told us to return in the other ones. I did not. None okay. of the other English has returning bits in it, so we have okay. not been returned. So that was just for fun. Yeah, this is well. The reason the reason this one is here is because it's different, right? It's different English and results in different code. So it's a di we're learning, okay. you know. Remember, I said that functions can take arguments or they can return. And they, some functions take arguments and return. Some functions only take arguments. They don't return. Some functions do neither. Some functions do both. All, all these things are possible. So I'm trying to mix and match here. Okay. So return the conjugate. Okay, now what do we do? So how do we build up this conjugate? Well, we know that the real part doesn't change. So we can say conj.real. We can say that it's this dot underscore real. So we've set the real part of the conjugate to this that underscore real. Now we need to set the imaginary part to be the opposite of our imaginary part. So if, if, let me see, if this dot underscore real is less than zero, else. I wish I could see the rule at the same time you were doing this. Can you drop that in as a comment? Well, the rule is... I guess that counts as a rule, doesn't it? Yeah, just to slash slash and paste that in for me. Just okay, two plus three. I'm okay. So, so we're uh, saying, why would you need this? That's yeah, why I want to see it. Why so do you need rocky. a test to see if it's less than zero? It's always going to be true. Yeah. See, so the real part just goes straight through, right? Doesn't matter. Why don't you just multiply it by negative one? You don't have to test it. You could just say, "That's a really good idea." <laughs> Yay! So kind of that imaginary this that imaginary times negative one. That's way easier than what I was going to do. That's like, <laughs> brilliant. Yes, absolutely. Lazy, 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 lazy. No, oh, lazy, good. Okay. So now we get to do the scary bit. Test your code. So I, I did write down what I want you to do uh, for the uh, for the multiplication okay. one. But that's so okay. okay. So add is easy, subtract is easy. Uh, change multiply the multiply one, change that one to wait, where are the two? Okay, so what do you want to be the first number? We'll the first one I want to be three plus four i, three plus four i, and the second one make it two and minus six three plus four i and multiply by three, no, two and minus six, two minus six. My cipher's correct. Oh, I did, uh, not the. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. All right. And what do you think the answer should be? I think it should be thirty minus ten i. Thirty minus. If it isn't, this is just wasted everybody's time. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. So let's let's, right. let's let's hit magic run button. Okay. No errors. Okay. So the first thing we're saying is make a new complex number and just say it. One okay. comma two. 1 plus 2i. Okay, that's correct. Add 4 plus 2i to our number. So we're saying my cn that add new complex number 4, 2. 
So five and four, that's uh, one and four is five, two and two is four, so that's correct. Subtract two plus i from our number. So that should become three plus three i, which it does. And you say the last one should be 30 minus 10 i, and it is. <laughs> Therefore, our arithmetic functions work. We have now created actually usable complex numbers. We could huh. do really cool stuff, with the exception of division, which is evil. So now we could go do physics and, and electromagnetics. Physics. <laughs> yes, we could. Yes, we could. Wow. So we made that, it that through, is, Bart. We made it through. And as I say, the point of this is to show you, well, I guess there's a couple of points. So the first is this is a pretty practical, pretty real world example of when you might want to create a custom data type. JavaScript does not understand complex numbers, so we have to explain it. And we have to explain all of it because JavaScript has no brain. It has no intelligence whatsoever. So we've got a point by point explain through that a complex number has two pieces. You can set the real piece to this, the imaginary piece to that. If you want it as a string, you do this. If you want to parse it, you do that. If you want to add it, you do this, subtract to that, yada, yada, yada. You've got to teach it everything. Hmm. However, we have succeeded in so doing. And we now have usable complex numbers. Very cool, Bart. We made it through it. I'm sure glad we did this in two pieces an hour and 16 minutes later. <laughs> yeah, no, that was definitely, definitely. We probably, if I'd been thinking ahead, we probably should have uh, broke the last one after part four. We are, but anyway. we are often uh, ambitious in what we uh, undertake, right? Uh, it's very hard to judge how long something will be in a conversation. Right. And I didn't even interrupt this much this time. I was pretty good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think we have now laid ourselves a pretty darn solid JavaScript foundation. Wouldn't you agree? I would definitely agree. Whether I can execute much of it on my own, I'm not going to gonna, gonna uh, promise anything. Oh, I am going to make you fix one thing. Uh oh, It's what been do driving I, me crazy. It? Line six in the comments, value has got the A and the L switched. <laughs> it's in your, it's in your, uh, <laughs> your thing online, too. I noticed I'll that like to, three weeks I'll, ago. I'll have to fix it for reals. So I still have to go through and finish Code Academy. I, I sort of stopped and uh, played with a baby for a week instead of paying attention to this, I'm afraid. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. It was a good now, trade I, I, I think, right, so I, do I, we're going to move on next time to moving into the browser. Even mm. if all of this hasn't fully sunk in, enough of it has sunk in that y the browser can start to motivate you. Yeah, having something to do. Exactly. Would be good. So I'm hoping that also, in terms of the stuff we need in the browser, w assignments one through four are like really, 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 really important. And assignment five is much less important. Oh, That's... good. Because I was way better at one through four. So the, if, if one through four are just absolutely hunky-dory fine, then we are absolutely ready to move into the browser. Oh, yay. Good. Um, and That's good we'll to, be able know. to start. Yeah, we'll be able to start doing cool and useful things. Uh, I would like to do at least the first half of our next one on video for one very simple reason. I am going to write in the show notes some English describing the JavaScript console, but I think we get a lot of value out of showing the JavaScript console. Okay. And the JavaScript console is, what is that? It is a part of the browser that is for, for programmers. So okay. it's a part of the browser that the, a programmer can use to talk to himself, or rather to have his code talk to him or her. Basically, it allows us to do... So we're going to lose pbs.say oh. because pbs.anything is the playground. There will be no playground. We are moving into the real browser. So if we want to output some information to ourselves to check something, to debug something, we need to write it somewhere else. And the place we write it to is something called the console. It'll be okay. a wonderful function called console.log. So pbs.say console.log. And I want to just show you the console because the console allows us to, to see into our JavaScript variables and things. It's really cool. And I will write it down for the blog post so that will be there in perpetuity. But I really do want to show it. And that's going, to be, that's going to become our new home. That's going to become as important to us as the playground was. Good, good. As we start to play around in the web. So we didn't get any hate mail about doing this as video. So I think we achieved the objective by not cramming a giant... 200 megabyte video file onto everybody's phones. Uh, yes. But we did get the gentle suggestion, please don't turn this into a video show. So having both, I'm going to continue to read as much as possible and, and stop you and say things out loud as much as I possibly can to keep people uh, it, being able to follow along with the audio. 
Well, to, to be honest, I think once we're done, once we're done with the next installment, I, I think we're back to business as usual. I don't think there's any need for a video after that. I think we're we'll just be back to like we were for the HTML stuff. In okay. fact, one of the things I'm going to have to teach you is a whole bunch more HTML. You have no oh. idea how to make a button. You have no idea how to make a text input, how to make a drop down. None of I those things. I don't. I don't know any of that yet, Bart. Yeah, I've got to teach you all that because, well, you got to put data into the computer, right, for the JavaScript to do cool stuff with the data. So we're going to need to learn how to do all those forms and doodads and whatsits. Lots oh. of lots more fun to come. Oh, fantastic, fantastic! All right, Bart. Well, um, I guess we're done for the next couple of weeks. I believe exactly a couple. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll talk to you again then. Okie dokie. Until then, happy computing. <laughs>